So now that we know what NDK is, the next question is when or even if we want to use it. Why do I say this? Well, an average Java developer, when writing application code, is going to be generally more productive than an average C++ developer. Um, why? Well, simply because Java has a superior memory management model. It has a superior uh, threading model, superior exception handling model, a superior set of libraries uh, that it ships with, uh, support for Unicode characters, and so on and so on, that C++ tend to lack. So, on average, we prefer to run or write a code in the Java language, and which we know executes on the final devices, on the actual target devices, in the Dalvik virtual machine. Now, that said, why do we then talk about NDK? When does NDK make sense? As I mentioned before, there are two main reasons. One is when we have a lot of code that already exists or that needs to be written natively so that it can function on other devices, uh, and we want to reuse it in the Java or on the Android side, we tend to write it in C C++ and then wrap it using JNI and access it essentially from our Java applications. Uh, the second reason is performance. Um, Google here mentions things like signal processing and physics simulation as, as examples of um, essentially sections of our code that are very sensitive to performance, um, but they also tend to be self-contained and very CPU intensive, and they don't tend to use a lot of memory. We'll talk about memory management specifically later. Now, do we want to write the entire applications natively, which we actually can? Um, we typically don't for a couple of reasons. One is as of Froyo, so API level 9, or I should say 8, um, Android ships with the um, just-in-time compiler, uh, which is part of the Dalvik virtual machine. This compiler does a pretty decent job of identifying parts of our code base, those that are code base written in Java, um, that can benefit from essentially on-the-fly op optimizations and caching, so that if that code base needs to execute very frequently, we can essentially compile it at runtime into native code, and then next time around, execute it as native code. Um, this is not something that's unique to Android or the Dalvik virtual machine. Of course, it's been around the block, if you will, even in the Java land for a very, very, very long time. Um, but it certainly means that the performance advantages that the NDK once had over just unoptimized interpreted Java code uh, that essentially runs as Dalvik code um, have somewhat faded. Uh, that said, the optimized Java code is still not going to be typically as fast as hand-tuned uh, C++ written code, but it certainly isn't the only reason why you should consider increasing the complexity of your code base by going towards the MDK route. Now, the, the framework um, that Android provides is for us to write parts of our application natively and then wrap those parts and uh, by a skeleton written in Java or to essentially using something called native activity implement an entire application simply in C++ with no Java whatsoever. If we go for the second approach, we are actually going to forego the use of certain features of the SDK, the Android SDK, like, for example, services, content providers, broadcast receivers, and so on and so on. So if at all possible, we prefer to still maintain the overall uh, code base of our application in Java and only write certain parts natively.